Thank you for joining us on this conversation, Ira, Curiosity and Creative Language. Um, we're really grateful that you chose to take part in it with us. So I kind of wanted to start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Nikita and I'm a curatorial trainee for uh, the Institu International Institute of Visual Arts, um, INIVA and Manchester Art Gallery is part of Future Collect. I'd like to extend a thanks to Innova and Manchester Art Gallery and also Art Fund and Art Council who supported this project and the creative conversation that's happening today. Um, so the conversation is a creative one between practitioners working within the fabric of art and creativity in the Northwest. And they'll be introducing themselves later on in uh, the conversation. Between now and 6.30 will be a kind of presentation of Future Collect um, and the project itself. And then at 6.30, there will be a, um, a conversation between the practitioners uh, in three parts. The first will be uh, about belonging, the second about language, and the third about curiosity. And then we'll finish up with concluding thoughts and thanks. So at this point in time, I'd like to hand over to the creative director of Innova, who will give us a little bit of an introduction into what Innova is and also into the project. Thanks, Nikita. Hi, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining us um, online this evening. So my name is Sapak Angiyam and I'm the Artistic Director of Innova, the Institute for International Visual Art, as Nikita mentioned. Um, I have a 25 year history of working with artists, writers, cultural producers and various publics. The institution initially chaired by Stuart Hall addresses an articulation of language of emergent culture to make space for a future generation of artists interested in interrogating and making work that addresses the complexity of politics of difference. Um, we had the unique pleasure of hosting the Stuart Hall Library, which contains over 10,000 volumes from zines and biennial catalogues, activist pam pamphlets and artist monographs. Um, it's one of the best places in the world to research, of course I would say that, because I, I get the pleasure of working there, but not at the moment. Um, and it's a great place to reflect and think from and write from as well. We have um, elements for collective study and reading, and when we reopen, we look forward to welcoming you there. Um, sadly, the library had to close its doors midway through March because of the uncontrollable spread of uh, COVID-19. Um, and for the care and well-being of staff and public and Innova um, has been working um, remotely since then. Um, because of our commitment to artists um, we decided that we wanted to continue with our work where we could. So Innova's interim programme brings our offline culture online during the pandemic. Um, this evening's programme is part of our Future Collect project, which sets out to try to envisage a new partnership model for working with national museums and to commission and collect artwork for permanent collection that better reflects the breadth of society. Um, in a recent AHRC funded research project, Black Artists and Modernism, led by the University of Arts London and Middlesex University, um, they published actually an audit of the artworks um, created um, by African, Caribbean, um, Middle East and Asian artists, uh, which are held within 30 public collections in the UK. The audit actually demonstrated that there are over 2,000 works held within collections within the UK, but actually only of a small percentage of them are ever displayed. And now this could be because through kind of systematic discrimination and lack of knowledge of the artist, the artwork and the provenance of the work, certain works being um, highlighted while others are often forgotten in storage and certain stuff, while certain stories emerge, others remain unheard. Um, Jade Montserrat is one of the first artists that accepted an invitation to work with Innova and Manchester Art Gallery to produce a new work to be subsequently accessioned into the museum collection. After a studio visit um, with the project's manager uh, Rahini Malik Okon and Manchester Art Gallery's curator Kate Jessen, Jade was invited to make a proposal. Jade's proposal placed at the centre what it means to practice care 
not only of objects, but also of people and of narratives, and to think about the language of care, as well as, as how it manifests internally and externally within the infrastructure of institutions. Jade's way of being in the world holds true to her thoughts and a real sense of praxis. Her project unfolds um, artists and institutions um, with artists and institutions in different locations, but it also, I think, unfolds for us, for Inver and for Manchester Art Gallery, how do we as institutions practice care? Jay is supported in the development of her practice through, and thinking through um, her artistic community of peers, but also with um, the help of Inver's uh, cur curatorial trainee, Nikita Gill, um, who's welcome to us here this evening. Um, they have both actually just sort of demonstrated to me a sort of determination of spirit and strong will, um, not only to kind of see through Jade's pr project as she has kind of proposed it, but also I can sort of see the formation of a relationship that goes beyond the formal contract between an artist and an institution. The National Conference, Whose Heritage, The Impact of Cultural Diversity on Britain's Living Heritage, was held in Manchester in November in 1999. Stuart Hall in his keynote speech calls for us to reimagine Britain, reinvented for all who refuse to become other in order to belong. This evening's event, um, Act One, Era, Curiosity and Creative Language, raises questions about who and what belongs to our public collections. While I was preparing um, what I wanted to share with you this evening, I wanted to think about what it means to come together collectively to rewrite history to challenge as what Sylvia Winter would, would say to us, um, you know, how do we sort of rewrite and rethink even um, how we think about history. We have a responsibility to tell new stories, um, to find language and articulation, to communicate them and new ways to relate them to each other. So um, thank you and I, I hope you enjoy this evening's conversation. Thank you, Sophia Kay, that was lovely. Um, so just to give you a bit of an idea about what the conversation is about, uh, Jade has proposed that uh, she would be making a series of works on paper, but also to engage in conversations around language and care. Um, and this is the first of three conversations that's going to take place. And it is with um, practitioners um, who kind of form the demographic of this conversation. But also we are kind of sensitive and aware to the fact that audiences aren't just practitioners, but they form all parts of life, especially uh, in, you know, in Manchester, in the Northwest, around Manchester Art Gallery. Um, and so hopefully we will be having this conversation and there'll be something that you can take away from it, uh, whether you are a practitioner or whether you are a gallery visitor or whether you are interested in this kind of term a public collection, which Kate Jessen will be speaking about a little bit later on. So um, I wanted to just share a little bit more about Jade's work um, and for this I will screen share. Jade is a research-led artist and writer based in the north of England. She studied the history of art at the Courtauld Institute of Art and Drawing in 2003 and at Norwich University of the Arts in 2010. Jade works at the intersection of art and activism through drawing, painting, performance, film, installation, sculpture, print, and text. Jade interrogates these mediums with the aims to expose gaps in our visual and linguistic habits. She is the recipient of the Stuart Hall Foundation Scholarship, which supports her PhD via MPhil at the Institute of Black Atlantic Research, the University of Central Lancashire and that work is titled Race and Representation in Northern Britain in the Context of the Black Atlantic, a Creative Practice Project. And the development of her work from her Black diasporic perspective in the North of England. She was also awarded one of two Jerwood Student Drawing Prizes in 2017 for No Need for Clothing, a documentary photograph of a drawing installation at Cooper Gallery. Jade's Rainbow Tribe project, a combination of historical and contemporary manifestations of Black culture from the perspective of Black diaspora, is central to the way that she is producing a body of work, including No Need for Clothing and its iterations, 
as well as her performance work, Review. Jade was commissioned to present Review as a 24-hour live performance at Spill Festival of Performance in 2018 and a solo exhibition at the Blue Coat Liverpool 2019 and was also commissioned by Art on the Underground to create the 2018 Winter Night Tube Cover. I wanted to quickly introduce um, Ira Aldridge into the conversation. Um, so if you, you may or may not know, but um, the Ira Aldridge as Othello, the Moor of Venice, was painted in 1826 by James Northcote. And it was the first painting purchased in 1827 by the Royal Manchester Institute, as it was known before becoming Manchester Art Gallery in 1882. Ira Frederick Aldridge was born in New York in 1807 and attended the African Free School where he received his education in many subjects before focusing on theatre. Due to the difficulties facing black actors at this time, Ira emigrated to the UK, arriving in Liverpool in the 1820s, after which he became a critical theatrical success, particularly in the region, regional theatres. He performed in Sheffield, Halifax, Nottingham, Lancaster, as well as in Covent Garden in London. And he became the first black theatre manager in Coventry, where he was honoured with a blue plaque, the first awarded to a black Shakespearean actor. He also performed in Manchester at the Theatre Royal during the period of time that the portrait James Northcote painted. It's also really interesting to note that Ira Aldridge um, had children, uh, one of whom became a singer called Amanda Aldridge, and she features in Sonia Boyce's devotional wallpaper. Um, it's uh, quite a nice relationship that, that was built with that because um, Sonia was one of the artists who um, interrogated Ira Aldridge's painting um, at Manchester Art Gallery during her residency there in 2018. Um, she was fascinated by what people could do when they come together and she worked with the gallery team and invited collaborators including the performer Lasana Shabazz and drag artists from Family Gorgeous who are based out of Islington Mill to make new work and that work became Six Acts um, which was a nighttime group takeover of the gallery exploring gender trouble among the gallery's 19th century painting displays and wider culture. Um, Ira Aldridge featured as act one of these six acts and became part of a new commission, a six screen film, which was shown for the first time in Sonia's retrospective exhibition at Manchester Art Gallery. Um, six acts remains up in Manchester Art Gallery at the moment, but as we all know, due to COVID-19, we can't visit it. Um, thankfully though, Claire Ganaway, curator of contemporary art at Manchester Art Gallery, has kindly offered us the opportunity to show scenes from Lasana's performance as Ira, as Othello. So I'm just going to share that with you now. Your object of obsession is this extraordinary painting by James Northcote, also a Royal Academician, made in 1826. Who is it, or what is it, and what obsesses you about it or appeals to you about it? Well, it's a portrait of Ira Aldridge, who was an African-American uh, actor um, who came to the UK. Um, so that's who it's a portrait of, um, though he's particularly known for being kind of a Shakespearean actor. And I suppose that's the thing that I was really interested in is his role as uh, not only within, uh, within theatre, but particularly as a, uh, his relationship with Shakespeare and, and, and the British theatre. You have a mid-career mid -career retrospective here at, at Manchester Art Gallery, mm -hmm. and you've made a series of new works, but one called Six Acts, mm -hmm. that, I mean, almost literally starts with this work, and you have a, and you're working with a number of artists, mm -hmm. but Lasana Shabazz assumes a kind of identity from Ira, yeah, I, um, so I, what happened, and this, this project is, um, has been kind of rumbling for a few months, um, coming out of conversations with the, the gallery team here, and I wasn't aware actually until we were walking around the, uh, these permanent kind of um, 18th and 19th century galleries, 
uh, historical galleries that this particular painting was here. Yeah. And actually this painting really kick-started a whole range of, of thinking and relationships. Um, and so what I wanted to do was to invite the Sana, uh, Shabazz, as you say, who's a performance artist. I know that he's been doing a whole series of performance called How to Be a Man. Um, so I was thinking, well, actually, it would be really interesting to know how he would respond to this painting of Othello, given that his, his own thinking is about um, that masculinity itself is a performance. Um, I then was also thinking, because of course I've been living here in Manchester during my residency in the 90s and was very aware that um, Canal Street is just around the corner and that there is a very, you know, there's a fabulous um, kind scene. of gay and, and drag scene. Yeah. I'm thinking, you know, out of the conversations that have been evolve evolving, that actually there's a lot of questions about gender, about race, about sexuality and sensuality that are all kind of crisscrossing quite problematically. So, you know, inviting all of these performers to come and do what they want, to, 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 to just see things that they find interesting, and let's go off from there. It's off to you. A word or two before you go. I have done the state some service, and they know it. No more of it. I pray you, in your letters, when you shall these unlucky deeds relate, speak of me as I am. Nothing can accentuate, nor set down aught in malice. Then you must speak of one who, who loved not too wisely, but too well. Of one not easily jealous, being wrought, perpetuated by to the extreme of one whose hand, like the base Indian, threw away a pearl, richer than his own tribe. Of one, more than just the more of Venice. Not a servant, nor slave. Of one who can change the time of thinking, One bends the head, rise the earth, allowing the wind to bend the body, lie the earth, the wind shaft of fate. No trouble. Bend the, the bone. Fly the Wing. Fly. Faint. And then, of course, there's Shakespeare, and Shakespeare is one of the. Um, is one of the people who's often associated with the development of drag. So drag, the drag scene often referred to Shakespeare and apparently it, drag means uh, uh, dressed resembling a girl. But also, it, uh, I think it's kind of quite contested how this term actually emerged, but the whole thing about a lot of uh, Shakespeare's characters would be boys dressed as girls or there'd be these kind of gender uh, transformations going on within, those, within knowing about his plays. So kind of thinking that actually there's quite something really interesting about how underlying uh, from this painting, there are all these various things that are um, uh, interrelated, but also dispersed. So this was why I was starting to bring other people in to kind of think, okay, how, how might you perform in this gallery space? That just gave a kind of brief overview of how um, artists have kind of been approaching thinking about Ira Aldridge um, so far. And in a way, this is inspirational and also a great way to kind of extend that conversation into this one, um, speaking through time from 2018 to now. Um, so 
what I would like to do is uh, hand over to Kate Jessen, um, who will give us a little bit of information about um, Manchester Art Gallery's collection and its redisplay. Thank you, Nikita. What is a public art collection? How is it used and why is it important? Our public art collection is an accumulation of over 46,000 objects spanning six centuries of fine art, craft and design, costume and more. It's been collected by purchase, gift and bequest for nearly 200 years, from 1827 right up to the present day, and it's owned by the people of Manchester. All these objects are in a state of continual flux. They exist both in the past and are used in displays to reconstruct the past and in the present where they are directly encountered. Every object acquires different values, status and meaning over time. Every object has stories to tell. How we tell, share and expand these stories, ideas and connections and generate new ones sits at the heart of our everyday gallery activity, even in lockdown. The significance of a public collection is in much more than the accumulation of individual objects. The core purpose of our collection is to encourage curiosity in all constituents and instill creativity into all aspects of life. It is the collective cultural soul of our city and it holds Manchester's cultural wealth in trust for all generations. To use the collection helps us to better understand ourselves and others. It can provide new insights into our past, help us to better understand our present and it offers new possibilities for our future. The collection is the lifeblood of the gallery and it sits at the heart of everything that we do. So how can we better tell our collective stories through the artworks we hold and the exhibitions we arrange? The majority of objects in public collections are held in storage. Today, the gallery itself is simply a vast warehouse of stuff. How does an object get to be a collection highlight? Why do other objects lie overlooked and forgotten in store? Whereas exhibitions pop up and down and anniversary-led programming passes, there's a permanence to a public collection. They are held in perpetuity and collection displays often remain the same for years. We believe that art has the power to change lives, but whose power is on display in our public art institutions? Does our collection display of British art history misimagine Britain, for example? Collection displays do more than reflect aspects of society back on itself. Their power lies in actively creating the meaning in the first place. If public collections exist to spark curiosity, how can we create access to objects so others can make discoveries of their own? What are the processes of institutional power which both enable and stifle a multiplicity of different voices? Who gets to say what? What stories don't get told? Who do we commemorate and why? Who are our heroes? Who gets to choose them? Can you find yourself in a public collection? We need our public collections now more than ever. If we can enable it, they can tell us something meaningful and useful about ourselves, help negotiate societal anxieties and capture our present in powerful ways. What our public collections need to show now is just how complicated and entangled our nation's history and identity truly is. Thank you.